everybody and welcome to Hey Man. I am Josh. Uh, as you can see, I'm not in studio today. I'm a little under the weather. It's been seven days now of just no bueno. Had to cancel some shows in Denver. Honestly, I think I probably I could have like if it was in town or I think I could have performed, but I was sick. I've performed sick before. The idea of getting on a plane always seems to make me feel worse. And also, nothing makes me more angry than sitting next to somebody on a plane who is obviously sick. And they're just like, fuck everybody else. I'm fine. And so I didn't want to do that. Um, And so I stayed in uh, probably for the best. Uh, And so that was Denver. Apologies, but I'll be back. We already rescheduled for March. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Um, and, uh, in the studio with my Kurt Cobain and the family and little Indiana Jones. And that's a picture from my wedding. And that's me with my, my 10 year anniversary. Uh, that's my 10 year anniversary. Um, and this is from a show called shark after dark and, Ooh, and you know what else is up there? Hold on. That is the menu from my peanut butter and jelly delivery service that I had when I was single raising the kids. Um, That's the last menu that exists. Oh, and that's the a million subscribers on YouTube plaque. Whatever. Guys, welcome to Hey Man. Look, you know, I I really want to start this by commenting on, um, for those of you who live under a rock and didn't hear, about Tony Hinchcliffe at the uh, Trump event at Madison Square Garden. You know, Tony made some jokes um, about Puerto Rico. He really joked about everybody because that's what he always does. Hold on. Let me put, Matt's putting up articles where I'm going to have to take my cool glasses off and put my nerdy ones on. So the headline is Tony Hinchcliffe defends his Puerto Rico jokes uh, from Trump rally. And here's my take on this, guys. First of all, I want to say this about Tony. He's not racist. He's not He's not racist. I've known him for a long time. He tells jokes about everybody. He's a provocateur. It's what he's always done. He's not a racist dude. He's going to make fun of everybody. Every single group, color, race, creed, one arm, no arms, you know, six dicks, whatever you got, he's making fun of you. It's, it's who he has always been. It's how he tells his jokes. And it's, I, I, the, so I want to, and I defend his right, honestly, to say whatever. This is America. You can say whatever you want. I, I want to say 100%, Tony is not a racist dude. I, I think it's interesting when you see <laughs> roast jokes out of a roast uh, event. It definitely hits a little different. Like if you, if this is going on for years, if you go back and watch Tony at the Snoop roast, yo, he went hard, hard in the paint, man. Unknown at that time, unknown in a room filled with black people. He went hard. He's not scared. And, and by the way, he he is a really good joke writer. I don't think these were his best jokes. I would, I'd bet you he would tell you that these aren't the best jokes I've ever written. But like, if you listen to the whole thing, he makes fun of everybody. On the other hand, if I was from Puerto Rico, I would understand being upset. And the people who are saying, if you can't take a joke or whatever, yo, man, these are probably the same people who if somebody says something about America, they're like, you will get the fuck out of here. If you can't, then, you know, go live somewhere else. Most of the time, what it is, these people who are so upset on either side, I, the, the snowflakes live on both sides, everybody. The snowflakes live on both. The, the people on the right call the left snowflakes, tell a Trump joke. They lose their mind. And I have a friend of mine who's like, make America funny again. Make This is a woman who make America funny again. She's great and she's married to a friend of mine make america funny again why can't i make these jokes and i'm like well you go after people who make pedophile jokes 
Yeah. Yo, dude, I'm going to tell you something right now. This is a weird way to start off this podcast. One of the funniest <laughs> jokes I've ever heard is a pedophile joke. I don't fuck kids. That doesn't mean that you can't joke about... I'm going to tell you the joke. Ready? This is going to get this entire podcast shut down. This joke makes me laugh. The joke is, there's a pedophile and a kid walk into a forest. And the kid's like, man, I'm scared. The dark forest. And the pedophile's like, you're scared. I got to walk out of here by myself. It's a funny joke. It's a funny joke. Do you know what I mean? So I don't think there's anything off limits. And I think it's the real snowflake is where you, when you start drawing lines. My view has always been like, I'm totally okay if you don't like making fun of people, but then you don't get to pick certain people it's okay to make fun of. Right? You know, I think Jim Carrey is one of those dudes. And I really respect this about him. He doesn't like mean comedy. He doesn't like making fun of comedy. That's not who he is. And he's always been that way. So I think that's cool. But also, I don't, or you, you have to be okay with every joke. You got to be, it's really very hard for me to sit here and say, man, th that Puerto Rico joke was really funny, but you can't make fun of America or you can't make fun of whatever. I just don't, that's not how I think. I think you, it's a batter if it's a, if it's a funny joke. Now, let me just say this again about tone. It's context. They're, they're, I don't think most articles are, are writing all the jokes he told. And what I mean by context is, is time and place. If he was doing a roast of, I don't know, a famous Puerto Rican, and he was there in the roast arena, these jokes hit differently. They just do. I, but I, again, I, I defend his right to say anything. I also defend everyone's right who is upset by it to be upset. Most of the times, like I said, people are upset at other people because it's like, you don't agree with me, so I'm going to be angry at you. It's such a weird time. I, and I'm going to, I had a bunch of other things to say about this, but I, I will say something that bothers me uh, and something that kind of makes me bummed out. First of all, I think comedians have way too much influence right now. I think Comedians and their podcasts have way too much influence. You know, dude, we're comics because we're generally broken people to begin with. Desperate for attention. Probably most of us, and I say us because I'm in the group, although I feel like I had a pretty good childhood, but most of us probably had some fucked up shit happen to them. And most of us are filled with opinions, but not a whole lot of true knowledge. I think it's weird. I think Rogan is the anomaly. He is such a curious guy. And again, dude, I'm not... Rogan and I are boys, so I'm not, I don't have to kiss the ring. I, I don't, but I'm going to tell you honestly how I feel about him. I think he's incredibly curious. I think Kamala Harris should 100% have gone on that show. He's not a gotcha interviewer. He's going to ask policy questions. He's going to ask questions. But, but he's not a dude who, who intentionally makes his guests uncomfortable. But I think most of us have way too much influence over the people who listen to us about these type of things, right? I also don't agree on the just stick to comedy stuff because every, people are like, just stick to entertainment or just stick to basketball or just stick to comedy. But they only say that to the people who don't agree with them. You know what I mean? Like nobody from the right has ever been like, Kid Rock, just stick to music. They're like, we love it. And people on the left make fun of Kid Rock, but they love that, I don't know, Taylor Swift. Right, right. We're so tribal right now. We're so tribal and against and scared of people who have different opinions. And so the, the fear is stoked by both sides. You'd be scared of the other people. I would tell you what, if you are not a Trumper and you think everybody who listens or watches him is racist. I would tell you that the encouraging thing is that Tony's jokes did not go over well. It, it wasn't like he they, he called Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage or whatever, and the place erupted. They were like, Ooh. right? So automatic labeling or fear, all that stuff, I think is is a bummer. 
But I, I would say artists in general, I think we're free to express opinions and ideas because we live here. We, we have an idea. Instead of pinning it on the artist about, hey, you should stick to whatever, maybe you should start to ask yourself why you are so influenced by somebody who sings your favorite song. Right? I, I think it's weird that you pin it on the artist who is a human who has their own opinions like you do. The real question is, why are the people following, why did they feel so influenced by somebody who just artistically does something that they like? Why they aren't more influenced by people who actually know what the fuck they're talking about, whether it's, you know, guys like James Carville or he's the only name that I know, but like Tulsi Gabbard, these are smart people who are in the arena, you know? And even if you don't agree with what they're saying, they're well-versed in what they're talking about. So I would say that that's a bummer. And, and, and as somebody who, I like dark comedy. And if you look at my special for comedy, for four stories, uh, uh, if you go to fourstoriescomedy.com, take it right there. But if you look at my special, I, there's some jokes in there in the stories that are that push an envelope. And I like, because I like dark comedy. I, I do. I, but I, I don't like divisive people or divisive rhetoric. I don't, I think that is what bums me out, is everything is so divisive. You know, why can't we have a party? Why can't I vote for somebody who wants tougher borders, but also rights for transgender people? Why doesn't that exist. Why, why, why do I have to pick all or nothing? Politics should be a la carte. I think figurehead wise, we need somebody for international, but for domestic, why can't they, why can't it just be like an a la carte menu at a restaurant where we decide what the most important for abortion, why can't I be pro abortion, but also stronger military if that's what I want? Why, why do I have to pick all or nothing? No, most people aren't all or nothing, but when you push them into that camp, which is it, two party, you're pushing somebody into a camp, all or nothing. This is what this side thinks. This is what this side thinks. And 90% of us aren't like that. But unfortunately, we have to vote for one group, which means we're this, we're libtards or Trumpers. Bing. Those are your two choices, everybody. You won't be a libtard, you won't be a Trump. Why can't we have somebody truly govern in a way for everybody? So on the ballot, you have the president who's going to take care of international shit. But as far as domestic, where I live, where things that affect my life on a daily basis, why can't we put that to a vote? Why can't we vote a la carte? So like most of us who live and swim in the middle, or like, I like a little over here. 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 And then that person who's the figurehead has no choice but to do what the people want them to do. And as you get pushed into whatever camp, the other side comes at you, which pushes you further into that camp, which makes you angrier and, and lash back. It's fear-based bullshit that they have us pitting pitting us against each other. And it makes me real bummed out. It really does make me bummed out. Be because this is how a society gets broken down. It, yo, man, most of the world would, would love us to shit the bed. And the way we're going to shit the bed is by keep going down the path we're going. It's such a bummer. This, the Tony thing is such a crazy example of it for me. He's a comic. What did you expect was going to happen? He's a roast comic provocateur. Go watch him at the mothership. Go watch him. If you think these jokes were tough, go watch him at the mothership. This is what he does. I don't know why anyone, now the people who have never heard of him before, I'm sure it was a bit of a surprise. But the people who hired him, I don't know how that could be a surprise. And he's a comedian and a guy, like I said, who I will defend anybody's right to say anything. 
Now, you don't get to get upset by people's responses. I defend your right to say it. You got to defend their right to have an opinion or an emotion on what was said. It's a real interesting time, man. It's a real interesting time where I feel like you have to be divisive and you have to pick a hard side in order for people to hop on board where you're at. If you ask, what is everybody's policies? Most people wouldn't be able to tell you. But you ask them how they feel on the social issues. You'd be like, well, I know he feels this way and she feels this way. Ask yourself this real question. Outside of how you feel, because no matter what side you fell on, is your world really that much different? Outside of, again, for those people, for the libtards and the Trumpers, you probably felt more comfortable during the different two terms between Biden and Trump. But your actual day-to-day, I bet you didn't change that much. And, and, and by the way, you know, if you listen to the Democrats, they'll tell you it will. This is, and I don't know one way or the other, but I'm listening to the ads. They would tell you that it's going to change if Trump gets in because he's going to change the Constitution. And if you listen to the Trumpers, they're like, it, it's going to be communism and she's a communist. But truly, in my lifetime, my day to day hasn't changed. That much, depending on who the president is. It depends on me, how I live my life. What's more important, honestly, is the, the, the rules of the state. That changes my day-to-day life. But that has nothing to do. So I think it's a bummer, man. I, I know Tony. I like Tony. Um, I, he has written some of the best jokes I've ever heard in my life. Dude, that. Some of the jokes when Tom Brady roast were A plus jokes. I don't think any of his A plus jokes were at the event, but that doesn't mean he's always going to take his swings. And I know he says, you know, I love Puerto Rico. I vacation there. I wouldn't vacation there anytime soon, dude. <laughs> I am. I would hold off from going down to Puerto Rico anytime soon. Again, like the idea of snowflakes, the right point at the left. So yeah, I'm going to tell you guys, you're, you're equally snowflakey. If you can't take the criticism, that is snowflakey too. It's everybody like, you better believe with me, believe what I believe, or, or you're a snowflake, or you can't take a joke, or you're a communist, or you're a racist. Tony's not a racist. I'll tell you who's racist, whoever made that Dwayne Wade statue down in Miami. Holy shit. Who's making statues for these guys? That was the fucking worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't know if we have a picture of that, Matt. But that Dwayne Wade statue, I was like, God damn. First of all, Dwayne Wade, maybe his great grandfather, like, they looked old. That was. And you know what I love when they unveil these statues is whoever's the recipient has to pretend like, oh, yeah, it's a statue. But you should see, dude, go look at Dwayne Wade's face when they pull that fucking blanket off the statue. It, it's so funny. So the, the statue, oh, my God, guys. Does that look like Dwayne Wade? Not at all. All. It looks like a dude named Dwayne. Maybe. That doesn't look like, if you gave me a million guesses, a million guesses, like G, cover up the Miami three. If you gave me a million guesses who that is, I'd be like, some old white dude? Like, I don't know. Yeah, dude, he looks like Dwayne Wade's grandfather. And he looks like, I don't, know if that's the basketball pose I would have put up there. It's truly horrible. Congratulations to Dwayne. Uh, not that I know him well enough to call him Dwayne. But congratulations, dude, on that statue. Look, nobody's ever going to forget that. <laughs> that was so bad. Why don't they just have the wax museum people come down and be like, hey, let me give you a little help on, on this statue. Anyways, I think we've talked about this enough. 
I do want to get to some news stories. I do want to get to um, uh, a couple of your emails, which were super touching. I, I, uh, I, I give you a little Jacob update. Um, I spoke to him. I speak to him a lot, and he seems to be doing well. You know, he's going through the process and and going through his meetings, and um, and he goes through waves of how he feels. You know, happy to be there, mad, sad, uh, grateful you know, fuck this place, which I'm sure everybody does. And I have to tell you, I know this is going to sound weird because it seems obvious, but it's crazy to me how much of my, how such a big part of my life he is. You know, I really, really miss, miss him, miss talking to him, miss hanging around with him. It's just on a friendship companionship level i really do they like, deeply miss him so i and i but i also am you know however long it takes for this to you know catch and work is because the big thing is is his life so that's where we're at uh, we don't really have a tentative date i think he has a tentative date in his mind about when he's getting out my tentative date is health that's it so that's a hundred percent how it's going to be judged on is um do we feel like he's in a good spot um guys i will say this and i've said this a couple times when jacob wolf gets out of sober living looking forward to cracking open a best day brew with him guys if you like an ma beer this is the best one going zero doubt in my mind tried a bunch of them this is the best one going go out and the guy who owns it a guy named jim great dude again he hasn't sold off to this huge comp any of the huge companies and best day is blowing up guys blowing blowing up he's not selling to some huge company he's keeping it in-house small so he can keep control of quality when the quality is through the roof it tastes good. You can crap o- crap? crack open a can if you're like me and you know you like that sound. But guys, Best Day Brew, without a doubt, my favorite. N.A. beer. Tastes good. All of the flavors. All of them. I'm an IPA guy, but all of them, super good. So go to Best Day Brew. Give it a shot. I promise if you don't like it, I will refund your money. No, I won't. But... Try it. You're going to like it. Um, All right. So that's it with Jakey. Um, But I'll keep you updated. I'm sure he'll start to check in. I think he might be able to join us via, you know, whatever video conferencing we want to use up here in the upcoming weeks. I think that's going to be part of, I think, what he's going to be allowed to do. So I think the two man, hey man is on its way back, everybody. Bing, bang. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, hey, everybody. First of all, thank you to everyone who watched the special four stories. Um, if you could do me a favor, and even if you, if you haven't watched it, is to go turn it on, even if you don't want to watch it, even if you don't like, I don't watch stand-up. Yeah, but do your boy a favor. Go just press play on YouTube and walk out of the room. Although I think you'll like it. But fourstoriescomedy.com. And sh- let's share it, everybody, if you can. I still haven't been on other podcasts to promote it. We're still going user-generated, me and you. And um, I think let's show everybody how powerful we are, okay? Fourstoriescomedy.com. I also want to uh, – I'm not going anywhere this weekend for Halloween uh, weekend. But the weekend after that, I am in Omaha, Nebraska, November 6th, 7th, and 8th. With uh, Sandy Danto. And then on the 9th, I believe, I'm in Chicago, one night only. Um, And then the week after, November 14th and 15th, I believe. November 14th in Bakersfield, California. November 15th in Sacramento. Again, one night only. Um, At some theaters out there. So come check that out, everybody. And the weekend after that, Des Moines, Idaho. So come on, and Seattle, New Year's Eve. Get your tickets now. That shit's going to go real fast. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. You still have a couple days left. 
to sign up at wolfcomedy.com. If you want to win two tickets to a show anywhere in the U.S. with plane tickets, got to be in the continental U.S., everybody. I'm not flying anyone in from Canada or Europe or any of those spots. So that's it. Okay. This is a headline that rare case of man born with three penises discovered by medical students in a first. Now, here is the thing. First of all, that sounds terrible. Three dicks? Three dicks sounds awful. But now I did, I wonder if it's the same as this dude, this two dick dude, who I found out do the, who had like two eight inch dicks, which is selfish. That's a little selfish, two eight inch dicks. By the way, Matt, did you show me this article to trick me into talking about dicks again? Because here we are. I would, I would never do that, Josh. Here we are, dude. Now, I went 20 minutes without talking about dicks, and now this is all dicks. Damn it. Another <laughs> dick trick. But here's my thing, man. Before getting into the article, that two dick dude, and the two dick dude said one of his dicks was gay and one was straight. Hey, that's not. Your dick doesn't decide. <laughs> but to have two eight-inch hard-ons at the same time, I had him try finding pants that fit. Two dicks? Oh, boy. As a teenage boy, that must have been diff- dick- dick-ficult. So let's just see where we're at. Medical students in the UK stumbled upon an extremely rare case. Oh, of a man with three penises while assessing a body donated for research. That makes sense. Because when I first started to read it, I'm like stumbled upon. Isn't that why he came into the doctor? Because he was like, I got three dicks. <laughs> hey, I got three dicks. How am I supposed to get rid of these three dicks? Around one in six million male babies are estimated to be born with two penile shafts. Why do you say that? Penile shafts. I don't like that. Two penile, two dicks, two penises, two penile shafts. Does that mean you just have the shaft and you don't have an opening at the end? Wait, so does one dick pee and one doesn't? Do they both orgasm? I have so many questions. A condition called defalia. Defalia? Only about 100 cases have been recorded in the past 400 years since it was first medically recognized. Trifalia, even rarer genetic anomaly that causes a male baby to have three distinct penile. Distinct penile shafts is a great name for a band. Previously reported only one other time in a baby born in 2020. Okay. Ooh, during the cadaver dissection of a 78-year-old man. I mean, look, get to the fucking good part. How big are the dicks? I think it was what we all want to know. Did you split one dick size into three? Or is it three actual dicks? Three actual dicks sounds awful. It seems cumbersome. And do they all drain from the same nut sack? Are you producing more sperm? Do they come at the same time, like the fountain at the Bellagio? I mean, does one come faster than the other? I have so many questions. So the the green part here and the red part here are the two extra penile shafts that they're talking about in the article. Yeah, but I almost... Oh, well, where's the other real one? Right here. Oh, dude, so he's got a big one and two minutes. Yeah. Oh, all right, because he's got little nubbins. That's not as bad as like the dude who had two eight-inch dicks. That seems to. But here's the kicker. Right okay, here. research from the university uh, suspect the prevalence of men with such penises may be greater than expected. Well, I'm gonna have to recheck, I guess. You could I mean, have been, a, a, a tri penis. I've Josh. been pretty thorough down there, Matt. <laughs> you know, can you go back up to the picture? No. Nope. Yeah. So underneath the above the nutsack, underneath the so the dick lays on the other dicks, but it doesn't say if there's an opening on these shafts, does it? In the latest case, the male was likely unaware. Nah, no. Oh, they were inside. Yeah. Oh, they're inside his body. Oh well, I might have one of those. Though this so the diff failure is outside the body. That's the thing. Go, Matt, 
Google, yeah, Google dude with two dicks. You might not want to do that from your phone, but Google dude with two dicks. This dude has legit two dick dicks. Why am I still talking about dicks? Next news story, Matt. Come on. How did you trick me into 15 minutes on penile shafts? <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's blow past this, no pun intended. Georgia sheriff calls deputies for help after becoming upset that Burger King got his order wrong. I would say if you went to Burger King, you got your own order wrong. To me, Burger King, the bottom of the rung for fast food. Let's read about this. A Georgia sheriff grew so angry when Burger King messed up his order that he called deputies to the store. Is this the dude? Why didn't you go in yourself, man? Ka, uh, who was up for re-election this year. Well, guess what? Guess who he's not getting the, any votes from? The fucking Burger King employees. Uh, to help address his botched order, three deputies were dispatched. Oh, let me guess. Is this Florida, Matt? This is Georgia. Oof. Close enough. The deputies approached Owens and his truck, who was parked... Restaurants almost was not in uniform. Okay. Hey, do me a favor. I need to get all I need on the owner, whoever owns this damn facility. Why? I wanted her to get a whopper, no mayor, cut in half, right? I don't need no damn money back no more. I just need to find out who owns this place so I can do an official complaint. Is that like how we want our tax dollars spent, guys? Where the deputy or deputy? Oh, I'm sure I, that's how he's... Dude, if he's doing that, he's deputy. He's not deputy. He's, he's deputy. They approached the restaurant doors. The employees had locked the doors and locked themselves in. Fuck yeah, dude. I would have done the same thing. That is bananas. So what happens after the end? Did he get his order right? Obviously not have it your way. He didn't get it his way. The, the sheriff claims it was a business dispute that any citizen could make. Yeah. But we wouldn't call the fucking police, you ding dong. We'd go in and be like, hey, let me talk to your mate. We'd Karen. We didn't, you didn't Karen. You fucking called the law to go in on these minimum wage workers who are just trying to get a fucking paycheck and get the fuck out of Burger King. And you decided to flex on them because the person in your passenger seat didn't get her fucking whopper cut. You pussy. You fu why didn't you go in, you fucking cuntbag? God damn, that is some bullshit dude don't business is you fine then don't call the fucking police good lord by the way i i know i just said gun bag and some of you are going to get real mad but that's all right uh yeah dude it it it, it belittles you and the office that you hold dude I was not in my uniform and at no point in my interaction with the staff that i identify myself as a member of the law enforcement community yeah but you called the fucking police to go do your dirty work. Just walk in and ask for the manager's name. Or just go home. Owens also purports that the incident is being p politicized because you're running for re-election? Yeah, dude, it should be. The fact that now everybody knows that you will use your deputies to go into Burger King to do your business is something that people should know. You power-hungry fuck. You were just trying to intimidate them? You called three deputies? Not even one? Three deputies? You ding-dong. You're not building confidence and trust in leadership. That's what he says in the article below. Why didn't you walk in? This is such, this is dumb shit. I wanted mayo cut in half. No? I, I said I wanted mayo cut in half. No? Boop. Guys, get down here right away. I need to make a complaint. Go make your complaint. Nobody's stopping you from making your fucking complaint. Go do it yourself, you giant puss bag. Why am I angrier about that than I have been about anything else that's happened over the last month? Fraudster steal 22 tons of high-value cheddar. Define, define high-value cheddar. I'm melting it and putting it on a burger, so how, how high-value could it be? Hundreds of truckles. Does it say truckles? Do they call it truckles instead of truckloads? What's a truckle? Hundreds of truckles. Oh, dude, Matt, let me give a couple guesses. 
Uh, it feels like l- truck loads is what I'm going to call truckles. Okay, so truckles are a small barrel shaped cheese, no, 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 special no, no, no. cheddar. So it, it's the shape of the cheese. Yo, wow. Wh- how- how crazy is it? Is this a truckle? Yeah, my, something like my that. My niece gave me this. Cheesy jokes. Here, let me read one for you. Now that we're on this topic. Here, let me show you what this is. I'm going to give you some good cheesy jokes now that we're on this topic. My niece Jane gave me this. Okay, ready? Matt, you want to hear a couple cheese jokes? Yeah, go for it. Okay. And guys, don't you say anything. My niece gave me this. What cheese do cyclists carry with them? I don't. That doesn't make any sense. It says paneer. Why does that? Why is that? No idea. Okay, that one doesn't make sense either. This is these are naming cheeses that I don't know. A guy drove past me in his car and threw a lump of cheese at me. I thought to myself, "That's real mature." <laughs> okay. What is yellow and brown and hairy? Cheese and toast on the carpet. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you one more, everybody. When should you go on a cheese diet? If you need to cheddar a few pounds. Come on, everybody. Come see me <laughs> next week in Omaha. I'll read a couple more of these. Uh, so let's bring this back. That was for you, Jay. Hundreds of truckles. It's interesting that they would make a name specific for Things that carry specifically cheddar cheese. Hundreds of truckles. I just like the word truckle. I haven't got past it yet. A cheated cheddar worth more than 300,000 pounds. Uh, Matt, how much is 300,000 pounds in American dollars? Let me look that up. I've been stolen from London's cheese specialist, Neil's Yard Dairy. Or in America, we would call it Neil's Dairy Yard. Fraudsters. Posing as legitimate wholesalers, those fraudsters. So 300,000 pounds is 389,000 American dollars. How much cheese is that? Hundreds of chuckles? So 389,000, even if it's 300. So so it's 950 cheeses. Cloth-bound cheeses. Again, a term I was not familiar with. A cloth bound cheese. Cloth bound? Okay. Let me just yeah, so, so basically, these thieves um, posed as wholesalers got this delivery from Love the che- cheese makers, stole it, and now the cheese makers are paying off all their individual dairies, but they're out almost half a million dollars. I think it's terrible that they're out this much money, but like, I love the mastermind of these guys. Like, hey, I hope Guy Ritchie makes this movie. I hope Guy Ritchie makes this movie because these feel like kind of nerdy gangsters. You know, they don't want to carry like a gun or anything. I'd like to know like how they how they fence this cheese. <laughs> like, how do they well, resell it? I I think they take it out of the truckle. You know, and they just sell it as cheese. Because even if they don't sell it as high end cheese and they just sell it as cheese, they're going to make a profit. If there's 950, right? Even if I sold them, like, look, dude, not, I don't know how much, how many times does 950 go into 300,000? Three, 316 times. Right. So that's how much it costs per, right? So even yep. if you're only selling them for 100 each, you're still making, you don't need to tell everybody that it's a truckle of this high value cheese. You're just trying to make some money. So I think that's how you make it, you know? Um, but I, I'm so curious how they came up with this plan. So to, to, they came in and basically as cheese experts. No, they came in as fake wholesalers. Yeah. Great. Great. What a great scheme. This is an oceans 11. I hope either guy Ritchie or the oceans 11 dude, Makes a movie about it. somebody's making a movie about this. But twenty-two tons of cheese. Oh, well, that's a lot of cheese. My question is, where are you storing? Wait, nine hundred and fifty truckles. 
is 950 pieces of cheese. It was hundreds of truffles. 22 pounds? 22 tons? God damn, that's some big cheese, man. Holy shit. Well. Yeah, the, you, you can see here. So, like, these are the, the truckles, I guess, the shapes of the cheese. Listen, if my, the only, I'm going to be mad if my cheddar prices go up. But besides that, and I'm, you know, I'm not happy that people lost their cheese and their money. I think it's kind of douchey, but. I, I am interested in who these people are when they get caught. I hope I hope they're just like, hey, you know what? I hope that Guy Ritchie makes a movie about him. Matt, I want to end this on a couple of emails if I can. Uh, guys, I've been reading your emails. If you want to send them in at the Hey Man Pod, it's hey and then man with three A's, heymanpod at gmail.com. Um, if I read your email on the podcast and you reach out to me, I will... Send you two tickets to whatever show is close to yours. These two emails, whatever email, whatever uh, show is close to you. Um, these emails kind of struck a chord for me. Um, I've been in my feelers a little bit, but just my relationship with my kids, with Trevor and Kate and Jacob. Um, and the more I hear from more of you, I, I you know I feel very lucky and very blessed. And I think it's the thing that I'm most proud of in my life is my relationship with my kids and the fact that I think they feel like that they can come to me for everything and we can have really honest conversations and talk about difficult things and that we still love each other and respect each other. And, um, and you know, we don't see eye to eye on everything and just, I'm their dad. So just like every other dad, I'm sure they talk some shit about me behind my back or that's healthy stuff, you know, whatever shit I've said about my dad or my mom or, you know, but I feel very lucky. And so these emails have really kind of touched me. And so I want to read a couple to you. Uh, hey, Josh, my name is Madam 30. I want to say thank you. My dad passed seven years ago and I took it pretty hard. So sorry, Matt. I understand that. He was my best friend and number one supporter in everything I did. I've been listening to the podcast from the start and just li listening to you and Jacob brings me a lot of comfort. Just pause real quick. This is the kind of stuff that that I am so grateful for and humbled by. Um, and so it's a, it, the fact that the relationship that Jacob and I can help people in any way is so overwhelming for me sometimes. Um, but something I'm super grateful for and definitely do not take for granted. I honestly take a lot of advice from you. That's your first mistake. As a father myself, listening to you and Jacob, I get both sides of things. My dad's are, my kids are both under five, so I'm still a young single father and still learning. I just wanted to say thank you for all the advice that you give and the advice I've taken from you and the comfort I get from something as simple as your podcast. Thank you so much, Josh and Jacob. That's from Matt. Man, that means a lot, man. I think I've mentioned a couple times on this podcast that as I get older, making a difference is really important to me in people's lives. And, um, and so to be able to affect people in a positive way and try to move things forward in a positive manner um, is, is something that I strive to do. And so thank you, Matt. I'm so sorry. For your loss. Yeah, being a single dad is not easy. I remember it. Just remember to have fun with them, dude. That's all I would say. Remember to have fun with them. Homework doesn't have to be like a, do your homework. Chores don't have to be like a, do your chores. Everything can be fun. Remember to have fun with them. Pick the right battles. And uh, just love them, man, unconditionally. They don't have to be you, remember? They just got to find out who they are. That's all I would say. Um, enjoy the ride. I, I do miss it. So thank you so much for your email, dude. It means so much. And for everybody uh, who sends these in, these mean a lot to me. This is from Be Well Seeds. I've been watching your comedy for quite a while now. It's really great stuff. And the podcast is great in its own right. I'm a man in my 40s. My teenage son lives with his mom. The chemistry that you have with Jacob is something that many men should be envious of. And I really enjoy watching you guys interact with each other. I don't get to see my son as much as I would like every other weekend. 
And I try to do as much with my kid whenever I can afford it. But even if we just hang around the house, watch movies and play video games together, I'm happy to have the time with him. Often I worry that my bond with my son isn't strong enough because I don't get to see him as frequently as many in-house fathers. I know he loves me. I know we're close. But I always feel like it should be closer. We should be closer of a bond. Maybe it's in my head. Might you have any advice for a fellow who wants to maintain and even build a stronger bond with his son, factoring in the every other weekend scenario? Anywho, keep up the good, the funny stuff. I really enjoy it and give Jacob my best wishes, as I'm sure we'll have stuff started. I'll be back and say, sure, all the best. Grover bees well. Be well seeds. Grover, thank you so much. Here's what I would say, man. Um, I do understand how you feel. You know, when I split from the kids, uh, biological mom, my oldest son went up to live with her basically full time. Not basically full time, full time. He came down one time to live with Beth and I, but it just wasn't for him. And he went back and lived with his mom. And I saw him less than every other weekend. It was a difficult time for sure. I saw him less than every other weekend, but I just made sure that when I did see him and when I did talk to him, it was. I was 100% present. And when they get older, it's tougher, man. It, you miss things. You don't get to be there for everything. There are times when you question if you're a good parent or not because you're not there all the time for them. And that's very difficult. But if you are consistent with loving them, being 100% present when you're with them, not putting, you know, they're teenagers. I wouldn't put any of the burden of the, I wish I saw you more, all that stuff. That sometimes can lay in with guilt with them. You know? Just like, I'm so psyched to see you. If, it, you know, if he's like, I wish I saw you more, you say, I wish I saw you more too. But you know, we do have a great time when we see each other. I would just be 1000% present all about him. And it's not about money, man. If you don't have money to go do shit. That's not, you don't have to be Disneyland dad. You got to be somebody who loves him um, and respects him, that he can trust, that he knows he can count on, be consistent. These are all things that lead to great relationships. Don't be like, I'm going to take you to Istanbul. And then, you know what I mean? Remember, we're going to Istanbul and you never go to Istanbul. Consistent, honest, loving, present. I'm not going to lie to you. Time spent you forge different relationships. You forge different relationships. I love all of my kids a thousand percent the same. I've spent so much more time with Jacob than I have with my older son. We have a different relationship. I know him better. I love them the same. If your son is with your ex, he just might know her better. That doesn't mean that relationship is better or worse and it doesn't isn't a reflection on you dude and as you get as i get older and over 18 the, all those restrictions are up you get to make it what you want to make it so i would just say consistent loving honest truthful respect and just be present and that's what i got for you Everybody, thank you so much, ComedianJoshWolf.com. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tickets and show dates. If you like this podcast, man, you think somebody you know would like it, do me a favor. Give it a share. We're word of mouth right now, man. Word of mouth. I'm not out on a bunch of different podcasts spreading it around because I want Jakey to be here. Word of mouth. If you think you know somebody would like it, Jake will be back soon. Love you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.